welcome to Virtual Sunday School. You know what to do, hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Thanks! Today we're going to look at a part of the story of Joseph. So we'll look at the Bible verses, a craft, prayer and then finish with a final thought. So grab your drink and a biscuit and let's do this. When you're stuck at home with time to spare can't go outside, you're not going anywhere Why don't you pull up a chair or pull up a stool Tune into Virtual Sunday School We're the craft to do and a story or two Say hello to Nat, she's stuck at home too Why not tune in to Virtual Sunday School? Now Joseph's story is a bit like Moses' story in that it's a huge one. You've probably heard bits of it. He had 11 brothers. His dad gave him a fancy coat. And there's even a musical about him. Which I love. Today, we're going to look at just a small part of Joseph's story when he was thrown in prison. You can find his story in Genesis chapters 39 to 41. So Joseph found himself in prison for something he didn't even do. Yet God was with him and Joseph decided to make the best of a bad situation. It wasn't long before the warden took a shine to him. And before you know it, Joseph was put in charge of all the other prisoners and everything that happened in the prison. He was practically running the place. The warden could put his feet up because Joseph took care of everything. After a while, two other people were thrown in there as well. One was a cupbearer, which is like a butler. And not just any old cupbearer, he was cupbearer to the king of Egypt then. And the other was a baker, but not just any old baker, he was the chief baker for the king of Egypt then. One night, while they were in prison, they both had very unusual dreams. The next morning, Joseph was busy doing his thing when he saw that his two new inmates looked a little bit upset. So he asked them what was wrong. They told their unusual dreams to Joseph, at which he said, interpreting dreams is God's business. And in fact, it was something that Joseph was pretty good at. The cupbearer told Joseph, in my dream there was a vine in front of me with three branches. It blossomed and the flowers became grapes. I had Pharaoh's cup, so I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup and gave the cup to him. Joseph thought for a second and said, the three branches are like three days. In three days, Pharaoh will forgive you and you will be the cupbearer again. Joseph continued, Remember me when you go back to Pharaoh and mention me to him. Now the baker had seen how well the dream had gone for the cupbearer. So the baker told Joseph his dream, hoping it would have a similar outcome. The baker said, I had a dream there were three baskets on my head. In the top basket, there were all sorts of bread for Pharaoh, but birds were eating it all. Joseph thought for a second and said, In three days, Pharaoh will kill you. Sorry. <sighs> and sure enough, three days later, on Pharaoh's birthday, Joseph's interpretations were proved correct. Pharaoh killed the baker and reinstated the cupbearer. Well, eventually, Pharaoh had a dream that needed interpreting, and thanks to what he'd done in prison, the cupbearer suggested that Joseph interpret it. Pharaoh said, I have had a dream about cows and corn. Sort me out. So Joseph interpreted it. He said, you'll have seven years of good harvest, but after that, you'll have seven years of famine. So you better store up plenty of food in that first seven years to survive the next seven years. And sure enough, that is exactly what happened. Thanks to Joseph's interpretations, the whole of Egypt was ready for the famine when it hit. Joseph found himself in prison, somewhere he definitely didn't want to be. And actually, he didn't even deserve to be there in the first place. You'll have to read that for yourself. But even in prison, Joseph was still able to do amazing things. He wasn't just a prisoner. He set to work and ended up practically running the joint. Then. Through God's power, he interpreted the dreams of the cupbearer and the baker, both of which proved correct. Because of this, he went on to interpret Pharaoh's dream and saved all of Egypt from a famine. This was thanks to what he accomplished while in prison. You know, we might find ourselves in places that we don't really want to be, like in lockdown. But that doesn't mean that we can't make the best of it. And God can still use us to do amazing things right where we are. 
And remember, the Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love. And he's with us too. Craft time, craft time, craft time. Craft, 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 craft time. For this week's craft, we're going to ice some biscuits. So you'll need some biscuits and some icing. I'm going to use three biscuits to draw different things that represent the story. Firstly, Joseph busy working away in prison. Then a cup for the cupbearer and some bread in baskets for the baker. Now before you eat them, see if you can retell the story by just looking at your biscuits. And then, if your grown up says it's okay and it's not just before dinner, you can eat your biscuits. <coughs> For today's prayers, we're going to ask God to be with us wherever we are. Dear God, thank you that you are always with us and that you never leave us. I pray that you will still use us no matter what situation we find ourselves in. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. And so, a final thought. Even when he was stuck in prison, a place where he could have just been miserable, Joseph kept going and God still used him. We might not be able to see how God could use us in our circumstances, but we can always try to make the best of a bad situation. And we should always be open to whatever God has in store for us. When all this lockdown stuff happened for the first time, we were in the middle of a big theatre tour with a musical, a bit like Joseph. We were visiting loads of different churches and primary schools with a show all about Jesus and then it suddenly stopped. We wondered how we'd still be able to do anything and tell people about Jesus when we weren't even allowed to leave the house. But that was when God used us to start Virtual Sunday School. And you know what? We've reached even more people with Virtual Sunday School than if we would have carried on with that theatre tour. So keep focusing on God and listening to how he might want to use you. Last week, we made some prayer hands. So let's have a look at yours. All right, virtual Sunday schoolers, you have sent in so many photos this week. You have broken the way I normally edit the photo montage. So I'm changing it up. See if you can spot yourself. Here we go. Prayer hands. Oh, and they're lovely. Look at the smiling faces. I love a good smile and big cheesy grins. And they're, wait, Samson, what are you doing in there? Doing your prayer pause. Okay, here we go again. So many prayer hands, and I'm liking the colours. I always like colourful crafts. Purple seems to be quite a theme. Look at that pose. Love it. Keep sending in your crafts. These prayer hands are awesome. This week, we want to see your iced biscuits. Ask your grown-up to head over to our Virtual Sunday School UK Facebook page or Instagram account and send us a photo. And don't forget about our virtual advent calendar and our brand new bags, CDs and t-shirts all available on our website. There's a link to the trailer for virtual advent calendar and for our website in the description below. Finally, give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. See you next week! Why not tune in to virtual Sunday school?